ninth week, I will continue my discussion on faults in rotating machines, starting with uh, faults in a very common machine element uh, that is bearing. And then we'll talk about gears as well. As you will realize, you know, every rotating machines have shafts, and obviously shafts are supported on bearings. And since bearings are held in mounts or in pedestals, actually all the vibration measurements which we make by contact based measurements are essentially done on the bearing housings. Okay. So today uh, we will be focusing our discussions on fault detection in bearings and per in particular the journal bearing and then the anti-friction bearings. Well, as you know, uh, the reason we have lubrication is to reduce the friction between the two rotating elements. For example, I have a shaft and the shaft could be a member of a machine component which could be carrying a gear or pulley etcetera. But the shaft has to be supported on a bearing which I am indicating by this crosses. So, the bearing essentially has a journal and I have a shaft. So, the shaft is shrink fit to the inner race of the bearing and then there are certain rolling elements in the case of a anti friction bearing and they will rotate and, and then shaft is supported. So, support the weight and allow rotation. Obviously, if I allow rotation, the friction force mu n has to be the least. Okay. And that is why we have a layer of lubrication between two members which are rolling or which are in contact against each other. So, we will have a lubricant. So, depending on the film thickness of this lubricant and depending on what kind of actions happen in the lubricant, we will have a fluid film and if this fluid film is responsible in the case of journal bearings, I have a little eccentricity made and then this is filled with some fluid. Because of this eccentricity, there will be a pressure build up only when there is a rotation and there is a stationary race. And this is responsible for giving a load reaction R, which will carry the load, and that is what happens in the general bearing. And everything depends on this radial clearance. So, during wear and tear, you know, the, the machine is at rest this shaft there will be no pressure build up because there is no rotation. So, this shaft is going to sit on the seat of the bearing and then again once the shaft tries to rotate there will be a pressure build up and this shaft will get lifted up and this is what happens in hydrodynamic lubrication. As opposed to in the case of hydrostatic bearing there is always an external pressure which lifts the shaft and then it maintains the load which is coming to or which supports the load which is coming onto the journal. But we when we monitor the health of the journal bearing we can see because of this 
starting and stopping of this machine, this heavy shaft will be in touch with these journals of the seat. So, there will be wearing of particle. So, by analyzing and understanding the composition of the lubricant which has got contaminated by these worn particles, one can glue, get a clue as to the condition of the bearing and that is what we will subsequently discuss when we talk about oil, ana oil analysis and wear debris analysis. But for the moment, I will say that to monitor the health of a journal bearing, one has to monitor the radial clearance. This could be done with a eddy current probe. or a proximity probe etcetera and looking at the oil quality. But we will talk about another class of bearings which is this anti friction bearing or the rolling element bearings. So, these anti friction bearings are and can be either ball bearings or roller bearings or tapered roller bearings and these bearings always have uh, direct contact. So, the surfaces which are in contact has to be hard and has to be polished to a finish, so that the friction is the least. So, the major components of a rolling element bearing are like they are manufactured. This is the outer race, this is the inner race. And in between the outer and inner is there are rolling elements which could be balls, rollers or tapered roller the rolling elements. And then there could be a retainer or a cage. So, that which ensures that no two rolling elements come in contact with each other and they are actually stand metal cage or a retainer. So, such is the configuration of a rolling metal uh, bearing and this could be fixed, the outer race could be fixed and then inner race could have the shaft fitted onto the bearing or into the bearing and then the load is being carried by the um, these rolling elements. Okay. Now, why does a bearing <coughs> vibrate? Now, so in my drawing here, I have not been able to draw a perfect circle and you are thinking that people have to man manufacture a perfect ring. Okay. So, it is very easy to design a perfect circle, but once we manufacture it, it may happen that this may look like this. So, and this deviation could be order of 2 to 3 micron from the radius. So, this is what is known as waviness. So, this is because of a manufacturing condition. And if I unwrap this black line, I can have a wavy surface. Okay. So, all of you would have done the experiments on or the um, studies on vibrations. So, even on a wavy surface, if I have a body of mass m moving, it will experience vibrations in the vertical direction because of the waviness and this amplitude of vibration will increase with the speed. Right. So, one has to ensure that one makes this waviness the least and that can be done with special manufacturing operations, honing, polishing. Okay. But no matter what, manufacturers of bearings try to reduce these waviness to a minimum, though they can never neglect it or remove it totally. On top of it, what happens? If you look at this wavy surface, if you closely look at the surface, they will be having what is known as the surface roughness. 
of this nature and with a So imagine I am having a rolling element and then in fact there are a series of rolling elements which are moving on a wavy surface with a surface roughness. So this is the origin of vibration in even a new bearing. Okay on top of it. So, to reduce this vibrations what people do or during manufacturing they put a layer of lubricant to remove this surface asperities. So, lubricant is put and the bearings are sealed for life. Okay. But what happens in the process of operation of the bearings the, the bearings are subjected to high temperature because of the process requirements are because of friction. So, this lubricant will get baked and then they will form hard carbon residues which will be on the surface of this waves. Okay. So, when the rolling element comes and moves on the surface, it is going to get an impulse excitation. Okay. And sometimes these hard surfaces or the hard residues may even scrape the surface and they will generate pits of this nature, though I have exaggerated it. So, I can have pits formed on the races because of impurities. One sort of impurities is this carbon residue, another form of impurities could be dust or dirt. Okay. So, these are all responsible for damaging the surface of the bearing. So, there could be streak marks on the races which I will show you later on or there could be potholes. So, if a rolling element is going across a bearing race, it will influence or get an impulse force. Okay. So, such impacts will occur on the races because of the pits formed because of the deposits made. Okay. So, when a new bearing because of waviness and surface roughness we have the vibration. This vibration will get amplified if there are hard uh, carbon residues, pits formed because the races are being scored okay. and then the load on the wearing could also be varying. Okay. The bearings are supporting there is an unbalanced load. So, what happens? This radial load is going to change with time. So, it will get loaded, unloaded. So, there will be a strong amplitude modulation of the load which is coming on the bearing and thus the vibrations. And, and there will be for speed variations, there will be frequency modulations. and for amplitude modulation because of load variations. So, you see the bearings vibrations are pretty complicated because of modulations because of uh, chain of uh, uh, impacts and so on. Now, I will come to another example. This bearing which has been designed it can be modeled. In fact, there are many mathematical models as a multi degree freedom system. So, this bearing 
can also be modeled So, this force is the external forcing function. Okay. Now, imagine when I had an impulse, I have an impulse force. So, the impulse force in frequency domain would look like this. This is in frequency domain. So, an impulse would excite or would represent excitation at all frequencies. So, it may so happen that it is exciting the resonance of the bearing, because the bearing designer would recommend operating speeds which are less than the resonant frequency f n. But when I have an impulse generated because of a hard residue on the rays, because of a pit, it will excite the system. So, system is going to resonate and thus have high vibrations at very, very high frequencies. So, on top of it, if you look at the bearing dynamics, if this shaft is rotating at a speed n rpm. and if they are all held, all these individual components will rotate at their respective characteristic frequencies. So, if you look at the bearing vibrations, both new bearing and good bearing, you will see these characteristic frequencies and then the bearing vibration itself is uh, complicated and so on and then I will show you some of these examples. So, characteristics of vibration signals from bearings amplitude and frequency modulated because of load and speed variations, bearing frequencies are present which this depends on the geometry like the ball diameter, the pitch diameter, number of balls or number of loading elements, rpm, contact angle etcetera. I will give you the equations and these equations can be very easily found out from the equation of dynamics. A very useful machine used for detecting bearing fault is this shock pulse meter, which is nothing but essentially the high frequency vibration measurement, because high frequency occurs because of the resonant frequency, which gets excited because of the defective rays like a pit scratch or a dirt. And now, so we know the sources of bearing vibrations is out of roundness of the manufactured components or surface roughness of the manufactured components and then the resonance of the components. So, this is a typical example of the vibrations coming out of a good bearing uh, acceleration signal. You can see the amplitudes are low, they are pretty much periodic, but uh, this is for a bad bearing vibrations. You see the amplitudes are high and they are periodic in nature, these impacts hitting every rotation the impulse are being generated because some rolling element or ball is going and coming and hitting against a defect in the races or in the ball. So, this kind of repeated impacts do occur in bearings and they are as you can see statistically speaking they are a peaky signal. So, parameters like kurtosis etcetera of these time domain signals can also be used to detect the bearing faults of the other than going into the frequency domain. So, these are the rolling element defect frequencies, the outer rest defect frequencies is given by this expression, where and the inner rest by this expression, ball frequency defect, ball defect frequency by this expression and this equations the outer race is assumed to be fixed and inner race is rotating. For example, I will give you an example like a ceiling fan, it is just the opposite, the inner race rotates 
uh, the inner rest is fixed to the axle or the shaft which is hung from the ceiling or the rod and then the outer rest rotates which is connected to the hub and the blades are attached. Okay. So, uh, R, uh, RPM is the rotational speed between the inner and outer rest, PD is the pitch diameter, BD is the ball diameter and so on. So, for a typical 6203 bearings which was mounted here, some of these dimensions are here. Using those equations, the fundamental train frequency, the ball spin frequency, outer rest frequency, inner rest frequency. For a speed of 30 hertz, these characteristic frequencies are calculated and if you will see the spectrum of the vibration, these frequencies will show up in the vibration spectrum measured at 1800 rpm corresponds to 30 hertz. This was measured in our laboratory. Uh, this is the case when there is no defect and then you can see only the rotational speed of the inner uh, speed coming up at 30 hertz. And then for the all case of defect because we have a manufacturer nearby who helped us manufacture bearings with artificially seeded defects and then we tested these bearings on our test rig and then for this class we have generated such virus and spectra. So, you can see the ball spin frequency, the outer race frequency, harmonics of the ball spin, inner race, outer race, all these show up in the case of the defective bearings. But sometimes you know I am speaking from my experience what happens in many of the cases because uh, bearings are an easy or bearing housings are an easy location to mount accelerometers to measure the bearing vibrations. There could be vibrations because of misalignment, because of unbalance, because of cracks, because of gear defects, because of bearing defects, everything gets complicated and they look very, uh, it becomes very difficult to analyze. So, to understand bearing signals, we must demodulate it, demodulate the signals or what is known as the envelope analysis. So, such analysis needs to be done. This is to give you a view of what I was going to explain to you on the sources of vibration in a bearing. So, this is the perfect circle of course, this has got like an ellipse because of the projection here, but then if you go to manufacture it, the, this may look like this. So, manufacturers strive to make it a perfect circle, but it is very difficult to make a perfect circle while manufacturing. On top of it, there is surface roughness and there could be dirt etcetera. So, uh, just to summarize, you must differentiate why even a new bearing vibrates. It vibrates because of the waviness and surface roughness. On top of it, with use because of the presence of crack, scratch or dirt, the signals get amplified because they would excite the high frequencies. So, a sure way of knowing whether a vibration defect in a bearing has occurred is just by monitoring the high frequency vibrations given out of the bearing beyond its operating zone and typically it is in the resonant frequency zone somewhere from 20 to 30 kilohertz. So, commercially there are many equipment which are known as shock pulse meter which only monitor the high frequency vibrations coming out of a uh, bearing and then if the amplitude of vibration energy is very high, they will see that the bearing is defective. Okay. So, characteristics of defective bearing vibration signals, impact rates of the defective components and then vibrations at high frequency frequencies relate to radial resonance of the bearings. Okay. So, we just discussed about these and uh, those of you who want to do certain experiments in the laboratory, uh, this is actually a bearing test rig. Uh, we have a motor uh, driving a housing where there is a bearing. We put an accelerometer with a power supply. We have a filter okay. and then we have a data acquisition system and then a personal computer. We have an photoelectric probe to measure the speed. Okay. So, this is a good bearing vibration signal. Amplitudes are low, by the way, they are 
deterministic periodic signal because of the variations and then with the outer rest defects you can see the impacts increasing and this is what we discussed with the case of no defect with the case of outer rest defect when we demodulate the measured vibration signal these characteristic frequencies and their amplitudes do show up in the spectrum and then we had uh, the outer rest defects 180 degree apart and so on with inner rest defects and with the ball defects with all kinds of defects so in, in you see if you can clearly identify these defect frequencies from a measured vibration signal and if you see high harmonics it is one way of knowing that the defect has occurred another is definitely monitoring the high frequency vibrations so this is the defect free vibrations so people can develop i.e for even not even looking the frequency spectrum just looking at the time domain of the signals just looking at the ball bearing vibration signals and then the outer rest defect frequencies and this kurtosis value of the signal gives a clue about the bearing conditions so bearing vibration monitoring is very important in uh, many industries and then i will discuss about this paper mill etc in a subsequent class when we do uh, vibration monitoring of as a case study in paper mills and how important it is so you can as you can see there are so many roles supported on bearings and imagine if one bearing of a roll failed the plant had to be shut down so we will discuss this in the case of a case study i just want to give you an example that these things do happen and how important they are okay thank you